hello hello my beautiful people how are you doing i hope you guys you are doing well girl is doing great so in today episode it's gonna be about story time guys um story time about the day i was attacked i was actually attacked by a drug dealer so in today episode i will tell you all about it how it happens and everything guys so before we go into the video please please like the video put on your notification bell and most of all if you haven't already please come closer come closer come closer and subscribe thank you so without wasting much of your time let's get into the video guys so what actually happened was <laughs> You guys probably read the title. The title say The Wig. You guys, if you don't know the wig, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, man. The wig. I think there are people that don't know what wigs are. Wigs are actually hair that we put on our head. So if you have a sister, let her explain what is a wig. Because I'm not going to explain what it's a week for you. <laughs> so, actually that day when I was attacked, I was going to campus. I was going to school. So, it was around maybe 6, 7 o'clock in the evening. It was about when the sun was setting. So, your girl decided to go to school. <laughs> And I can see it was getting dark, but your girl decided to go to school. I was kind of fearless. I'm not that type of person that is, you know, there are these people that have abnormal fear. Like they just shake. For me, I was like, my fear were normal. So I thought to myself, I want to go to school, to the lab, but it's getting dark, but I thought to myself, I can manage me. Let me just go to school. So, when I was going to school, we actually passed through a park. And a lot of time, um, people used to say, no, that park is actually dangerous. We must not pass through the park. It's better for us to follow the road. So your girl was comfortable with South Africa. I was living there my best life. I was living there as if I was in my village, guys. <laughs> I was comfortable. I was doing, I was even like, I can be walking in the street. Life. I am, I am in the morning. Or I can be walking in the street in the middle night. That's how comfortable I was. It's as if I was in my village. <laughs> so this time was not my day. <laughs> Your girl was going to campus. On her way to campus, I was actually rushing to go to campus. I'm there in the middle of the park. Yeah. Passing through, through the park, it was actually a short way. So your girl decided to pass through the park. While I was passing through the park, I was in the middle of the park. Then somebody came in front of me. I didn't even see these people where they were coming from. So the guy came in front of me. And then he was like this. Um, how are you ma'am? I'm actually not a beggar. I want to ask you something. He was holding his hand like this. I kept walking. Then this guy kept like blocking my way to move forward. It's like, ma'am, uh, please, 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 please. And then I pretended to be like angry. You know when you are pretending to be like angry, like, man, out of my way, like... 
What do you want? So I was going and I can literally see that this guy is blocking my way. You know what your girl decided to do? Something came into my mind that no, no there is something wrong here. So I tried to run back. To go back to the house because i was moving i was going to the to the campus so this guy was in front of me like blocking my way to go to the campus so i thought to myself Nine Kela, there is something there is something fishy there's something is wrong you must actually turn and run that's what my brain was telling me so what your girl did, I tried to turn. The moment I tried to turn, this guy grabbed my hair like this. Like the way I'm holding. He grabbed it. Remember guys, I was wearing a wig. And this wig, I, I actually cut my hair like this. And this wig was having a pin to secure. It was having a pin. When he hold my hair like this, I move backward like this. And then the wig fell off. He removed the wig like this. He was holding the wig on his hand. <laughs> like this guy grabbed my wig. He was holding it. I was frozen. I was frozen like my wig is off. And I think this guy... He never saw a person wearing a wig. Because the way he was looking at the wig and at me, he was like, like for example, let me show you. This is a wig. He was holding the wig like this. He was like, he's looking at the wig. He's looking at me like, what is happening? And you know what? The both of us, for maybe 30 seconds we were both frozen frozen i'm looking at him carrying my wig he's he's still holding the wig looking at it and the eyes were big like looking at the wig he's looking at me we were both like both we were frozen nobody's talking we are just looking at each other now it was me who was unfrozen first so i decided nikela run i wanted to run but as if some something i was stuck i was frozen then i decided to turn and run back like going to the house when i was trying to run back to my house i felt that my phone fell down when my phone fell down, I'm like, bam, my phone fell down. And for me, my phone was like everything to me. Because I kept all of my information, all of my documents, a lot of information that I had. I didn't save it on my laptop. It was on my phone. So for me, my phone was very important to me. When I realized that my phone fell, I turned back to come for my phone. When I like turned back to go back to my phone, I can see this guy is still holding the wig. He's still holding the wig like this. It's like shaking. Like he, he's not even letting go of the wig. <laughs> I'm thinking this guy never saw a wig in his life. He was wondering what is happening. So, when I turned back to go to my phone, to go get my phone, he saw that I was running toward him again. And then he noticed, he also noticed the phone. That is the time that he let go of the week. And we were both running toward the phone. It's like he's coming from this side where I left him. I'm coming from this side like to meet and see who is who will grab the phone first. 
who get hold of the phone first. So the guy got hold of the phone first. The moment I put my hand there, like there, his hand, like we were like at the same time, but his hand went down first. So he grabbed the phone. When he grabbed the phone, when he took the phone from the ground, I was like, no man, like at that moment, let me tell you the truth. I have no fear in me. I was like, no man, I want my phone. I was like, I want my phone. Give me my phone back. That's what I was saying. So I was actually moving, like move. he's having my phone. I was like moving toward this guy. Like I'm getting into him, like give my phone. Like I'm not going to back down. Give my phone back. So he realized now. This girl is like, he's serious, he's moving toward me. So he got into his, um, like he's getting into his pocket to pull out something. Then he came like this. I'm like, ah. then I begged that knife. I'm like, maybe he's getting the knife. You know, when the person is pulling, like he's pulling something from his waist, it's like, or pocket like, ah. When he came out like this, he was not carrying anything. So when he pulled out like this, I went like back because I was scared. Maybe he's getting a knife. I went back. I moved back. When I moved back, he actually punched me like, I just see like a punch. Bah! I didn't even feel the punch, but you can see a person punch. It's like, bah! but I didn't feel it at that, at that time. So when he punched me and then he tried to run, run away to the other side to go close the road closing the road when he ran and he punched he punched me like that i went and took my wig because he just dropped it down so i went shake my wig like there was no scent because remember we were in the park it was green so there was no wig i just pick it there was no scent i just pick my wig and put it in the head put it on my head so that when he crosses the road there were cars passing by and i was shouting me i was shouting that guy took my phone please help and guess what not even a single car that was stopping in fact people's car window they were closed like totally closed like cars were just passing i'm shouting stop please help me that guy took my phone nobody absolutely nobody was responding to me so when the guy crossed the road there were cars so i have to stand for the car to pass they were not even stopping when i crossed the road i noticed a small kid this kid was actually maybe eight years old something or seven years old he was running like coming from from the direction of my house he was running barefoot he was like shouting i saw what happened i saw what happened that woman was robbed i actually saw what happened she was like running away so i was not my focus was not at the boy it was at the man and the fifth when the small boy was running there was a man walking he was just walking like with slow motion, you know, like <laughs> he just walking like a, like a real man, like a real gentleman. And then I'm like, sir, please help me. That guy took my phone. <laughs> Guess what the man was saying? He said, I know. Then he said, I know the guy actually. That guy said he know the guy and he cannot help me because he is, him and the guy, they are enemies, is what he told me. Like, I want to help you, but I know the guy. That guy is my enemy. So I cannot help you. So remember that guy when he grabbed my phone and when he like punched me, he ran. He closes the road. I went to go pick up my wig. 
So he was running. But the time I was telling the other guy, he actually stopped running. And then the other guy was like, just chase him. He's no more running. He's no more running. He's there. At that moment, when the whole like chaos was happening, I was fearless. I have no fear in me. But when that guy said, he actually stopped. Just go get your phone. Like the fear now is now is is the time I started to be like the the, the fear was getting into me. I was like getting scared. And I'm like, no. Then I asked the guy, you say you know the guy. Then he say, yeah, I know the guy. What you have to do is just call the police. Even the police, they might know him because he's a drug dealer. He say he's a drug dealer. If you call the police and you tell them the name, they might know him because he's dangerous. He said, they say he's a drug dealer. I don't know if it's true or not, but that's what the other guy was telling me. So I asked the guy, the other guy, that he said they are enemies. So where are you going? He said he's going to, to the shops. Then we were like, like I said, okay, let's walk together. But he was emphasizing when I was walking with him, like I must tell the police what happened. I must report him to the police. Now I was thinking to myself, like, sir, how can I call the police if the guy took my phone? Then I told the guy, you know what, the guy that I was with now, like, maybe give me your cell phone number. So, because you say you know the guy, you know where he stays, give me your cell phone number and then I'll call you up. And then you take me to those guys. If if I happen now to call the police, you go with us. He said, okay, no problem. Then he gave me his number. Then I went. That time, I continued. I didn't go back home. I went to campus because my friends were there. When I went to campus, like, through the way, I was actually fearless. I was, I was not fearless, but furious. I was very angry. Like, how can that guy to take my phone, man? Does he know how many documents I have? Unsafe stuff. Even some of the research that I was working upon. How could he do that? I was angry with myself. I couldn't care less about the phone. But I care what was in the phone when i actually got to campus my friends were there and then i just told my friends that i found my my friend in the lab like study and i'm like just guess what happened i said it in a joke way like <laughs> guess what happened my friend then like I'm like, my phone is gone. I was robbed. Then like, ah, Lilekela, get serious, man. You know, with my friends, it's like, I'm a joker. I'm a joker to my friends. Because even the serious things, I turn it to in, into a joke. So she thought I was joking. I'm like, I'm serious. My phone is gone. <laughs> and they say, what happened? Then I just told him what happened but I kept that wig stuff like him removing my wig and stuff I'm like ah no 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 I'm not gonna tell her because she will make fun of me I'm not gonna tell her that story and then from that day I'm telling you for three months my life was not the same because the girl that was fearless 
I turned, I turned into a fearful person. Like I was so scared that I could not go outside of my house or outside campus without my friends. I was that scared. Then I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, this is not normal. This is not normal. This is not me. It's like, I was so scared. I was very scared. I was, every time I go out of my house alone, I'm just thinking to reach the next destination because I was trembling in fear. I'm like, I can't do this. This is not me. The person that used to be fearless, that used to take risk, that used to walk in the middle of the night, that used to walk 5 a.m. in the morning alone. Now she cannot do that. She cannot even leave her room door. I was like, I was so, so, so much scared. And guess what? Remove my fear. 